It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey there, everybody. It's the Fellowship of Geeks podcast. My name is Thomas Chick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlowe. Hey, gang. Les Webster. Hello, all. And Les Newman. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Great. Groovy. Grand. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. And first of all, welcome to year five of the podcast. Uh-huh. Yay. And welcome to episode 200. Ah. Huzzah. Who ever thought we'd do 10 of these damn things, much less 200 of them? <laughs> True that. Uh. Yeah, we hard to believe we've hit those two milestones. Uh, of course, Mike's been here the entire time. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Shocking. Well, because you're yeah, because you're the one that does record. <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't be. record if I'm not here. Huh? <laughs> Didn't think of that. Yeah. yeah, I've only missed one. So, and you kind of complained to me after that. It's like, don't ever miss again because I hate being the host. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, even this far in, I would still fumble and stumble if I had to take that over. Yeah. Hell, I still fumble and stumble. I've been doing this. For Four years? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, but it's okay when you do it. Oh. <laughs> you keep us on track. <laughs> uh, with Sometimes. Some, some varying degree of success on that one, right? Yeah. Don't know if I'd brag on that one, but yeah. <laughs> so, what's been going on in your corner of the galaxy? I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> I can't imagine why, given our pre-show, you would be afraid to ask that at all. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't keep less quiet, man. It was like, shh. Wow. <laughs> Don't you believe it. <laughs> and show of hands how many gets that reference. <laughs> If you do, yeah, I don't see. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't see a lot of hands, and that's okay. I, I understand. Do you get that one? I saw that cool. the other night. Cool. I got it. Awesome, Mr. <laughs> Cotter, Mr. Cotter. Um, maybe I didn't. <laughs> don't let him confuse you. No, that's anywhere I picked it up. That may I was be thinking Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. I think it happened in a Looney Tunes or two too. Yeah, you know, was, I think it was more like a time frame thing, but anyway, over in last time. But <laughs> all right, we're stalling here pretty good um, to, mm. to avoid talking. Um, I had a, I don't know, pretty uneventful week for a change, which was nice. I mean, work is crazy, but work is always crazy. Um, what I did stumble across um, was. I I don't even know. I was just flipping around on YouTube one night and was looking at some stuff and and I saw this thing that on which was on the British comedy show The Young Ones and so I kind of watched it. The what it was a little it was a, like a top twenty moments type thing which I thought which I kind of watched because I was curious because the damn series only lasted twelve episodes. I'm wondering how do you get twenty moment twenty top moments out of this. Uh, but yeah, that they're taking scenes basically, so it was like two or three minute long scenes. But yeah, it was kind of a reminder that oh yeah, I need to watch that again soon because I really like that show. Um, I mean, at this point, I feel like I've kind of seen a lot of it because I watched a forty five minute thing on on it, and again, twelve episodes. But yeah, um, it is absolute madness. And that, in in like all the best possible ways, um, it is it is taking the crazy stuff you can possibly do on TV and ramping it up to eleven, um, to the point where it, literally each episode didn't make sense, and that was on purpose. 
it was intended to not make sense and there was intended to be zero continuity um, there were a handful of times at least that one or another of the characters died <laughs> and came back like a couple of scenes later and it was all fine <laughs> it, yeah and nobody, and nobody cared and it was just insanity and and it was and it's and it's a hoot it's a blast of a show to watch they killed Kenny <laughs> <laughs> well, they killed they killed Vivian at least once. Um, they killed Rick a couple of times. Neil died at least twice. Uh, I think even Mike died once. And I think Belosky died every episode, which was fine. He was always a different character when he came back anyway, so it was fine. <laughs> this reminds me of an episode of Family Guy where I can't remember. Maybe it was Brian died. And Peter goes, well, it's okay, because we're at the end of the 30-minute mark, and they'll forget all about this next week. <laughs> you know? So uh, I was like, yeah, it's pretty much the way it is, you know. Okay, cool. Well, um, <laughs> I, I really don't have a lot to to add. <laughs> <laughs> and be thankful, people. <laughs> I got my my little rant and stuff out. Um, no, but I would just like to throw out there that I have a couple of friends who do listen to our show and family and stuff too. And it's it's always curious when, you know, they ask me certain questions or it, you know, kind of lets me know they're, that they're listening for one, but it, it's, it's kind of neat because, um, I don't, I don't know if you guys go back and re-listen to our shows, but a lot of the times I don't cause I was there. <laughs> I wouldn't either if I didn't have to edit the damn things. <laughs> right. So sometimes it's like, wait a minute, what did I say? <laughs> Did I say that? Really? Right. Maybe. And I don't know. Right. Sometimes it is. It's like, oh, man, I, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my daughter-in-law just started a um, a YouTube channel. And she's she's going to be doing nails and that kind of stuff, tutorials. And she's like, you know, the, the, the main thing I'm having a hard time getting over with is the talking part. And I said, yeah, I, I remember my first couple of times, you know, my first time with you guys and stuff. I said, it, it is. It's kind of nerve wracking. I said, but now it's it's like you forget that, hey, you know, someone's going to be listening to this later, <laughs> you know. But I, I said, you know, so you'll, you'll, you'll get comfortable with it. And, you know, after a while, you just kind of forget. I, I always kind of look at this as. I've sat down and I've talked to a couple hours with my friends, you know, so, but yeah, so I asked what I, I, I mean, don't you guys feel that way too? After you guys did it for a little while, it's a little bit more comfortable and, oh yeah, you know, it, absolutely. I never imagined, um, even a few years ago, getting on something like this and talking for hours and it just, I couldn't, I would have never thought I could do it. Yep. Now I kind of look forward to it every week. Yep, me too. Like I said, I, I forget that there's there's an audience, you know, like the beginning of a movie, the audience is listening, you know. But I, I guess not only that, is it's it's a comfortable environment. We haven't received a lot of criticism for what we do. And usually when I do hear from people, it, it's it's not criticism, but it's kind of like maybe you should have read, you know, you should have thought about it this way. So, but yeah, I said that's always kind of cool. Now, I've just, um, I feel like, you know, like I said in pre show, I've started rereading Secret Wars. So, I will let you guys know if I change my opinion on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. But like I said, I've I've always enjoyed the art. I mean, it. I wouldn't read comic books if I didn't appreciate art. But yeah, I said some of it was confusing. So maybe the second, third time around, we'll we'll see. Yep. 
I'm just, I think it bears rereading. Yeah. For sure. Like I said, I, I understand the impact that it was supposed to make. It just, yeah. I don't know. Well, it was, it's, a, it's a story with a big enough scope and a complex, I mean, if nothing else, just the sheer volume of characters means that you're going to have a lot of different stuff going on all at once. And so you'll probably yep. pick up stuff this time that you didn't see the first time. And that's fine. That's cool. Right. And, and I think, too, it's it's always interesting when we're preparing for a show. Because you get this ideal in your head and, you know, you're like, this is the way, you know. But then when you add three more conversations into that, I think even you guys had brought up a lot of stuff that I didn't pick up from the book. So maybe rereading it this time around, knowing what I know, you know, from you guys and stuff that maybe it won't be as confusing and I can appreciate it more. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. But I do hope our audience gets the same thing from our conversations that I do. Because like I said, you, I, I think all of us have like a – sometimes even though it's the same opinion, it's different. And that's always interesting. So. Yeah, we all kind of have different experiences that we're reading things with. So mm-hmm. we, we all kind of come from – I mean, we, we're, we're all friends and some of us for ridiculously long periods of time. But we still have different – sets of experiences even though we experience some stuff at the same time yep and that's a good thing it is a good thing yep and now i can see why podcasts are popular (laughs) absolutely yep so like i said keep it coming guys we i i know i enjoy hearing from you guys so yep yep we do we all do yep like I said, all complaints go to the fake less account on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he will take care of those immediately. <laughs> we, will give, take care advise it. We, will, <laughs> we will give them all of the attention that they deserve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, it's backing up any minute now. <laughs> You don't care. You don't even know the password of that account. Dude. Right. What do you care? It's like I have a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> what is this twit? <laughs> it's this little bird. <laughs> like I said, I think you pegged it right with twit. <laughs> I can't argue with that. I can't add to that at all. That's perfect. Yep. <laughs> okay, Les. How about you? By comparison, I lack uh, nothing much here. It was just a an okay week. A little bit of work at the shop, and that's about it. You still drive down there once a week, huh? Well, Come on by. That's a beautiful area. It really is. And it is expanding. Yeah. The comic book store is or the area? The area. The area, yeah. Well, it's it's definitely not what you put in mind when people say Oak oh, Cliff. Or not what I had in mind. <laughs> yeah. No. So, like I said, once we got down there it was like, Wow, this is this is really nice, you know. It's a fun area. It's always mm-hmm. active. Yeah, it's and it's been kind of around long enough that it's kind of established and and like you said, starting to spread out a little bit. And yeah, it's cool. Okay, uh, for me, not a whole heck of a lot. Although I've, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to make Mike cringe when I say this. I'm starting to kind of get the itch. Of wanting to play the old Marvel role playing game. <laughs> so I've started kind of going back over reading, reading the old rules. And it's funny because the timing, the timing's kind of weird because I saw that one of my Facebook friends had posted something just within like the last week or so it's, it's talking about, you know, uh, 
he's thinking about doing something. On, on, I, I don't know if it's going to be on Facebook or anything like that, but uh, trying to do like an online Marvel role playing game the, mm-hmm. using the old rules and all that. And I was like, well, that's kind of the timing seems kind of strange, but interesting. And it, it reminds me of of, uh, and I think I talked about it on the show a while back of. Um, so when I met when when the when the store was open and for those who are uh, new to the podcast and haven't gone back and checked out uh, some of our older shows, uh, I used to be a store manager of a comic store uh, until about a year ago uh, when they closed. And um, there was one day a guy came in. He was looking for he was looking something for something D and D related, and we kind of got talked for a while and he told me that he had a Facebook group that was set up and that's how that's how they play the game. And he's the DM. So he would just you know, he set out the scenario and then the players when they were they had time would log in and go, Okay, well my character does this and and then they would they would because he added me to the group at one point so I was because I was so interested in seeing how this would work. And they would post pictures of their of their roles, hmm. and so and, and so that's how that's how they played the game because they didn't have time to sit down for a couple hours to play a game or do mm-hmm. an adventure. And I'm like that. I'm like that's kind of interesting. So it sounds like it, so it sounds like that may be what may be happening here with this Marvel game. I don't know. He just threw it out there as kind of get feelers to see if there was any interest. I don't know if the, I didn't pursue it enough because uh, you know I don't know if I'll do it, but I just kind of got that itch again, and I I love the old system. I love the face rip system. Mm. Uh, you know, is this geeky? Yeah, it's geeky. Yeah. Yep. I, I've been kind of curious to see that get up and going too. He's he's invited me to the Dungeons and Dragons. And although I've played Dungeons and Dragons, it's been years. <laughs> I mean, we're talking years. So I feel like I would drag down a group trying to relearn with the new rule books and, you know. Now, you say that. The, the thing to keep in mind is that most veteran players love having a newbie in the group. Because hmm. it means they all get to go back and kind of relearn the rules. I mean, there are people who don't, but a a lot of them really do. I always did. I always loved bringing new people in because you get to teach them. It was always exciting to teach them, teach the newbie the cool new stuff that they can do. And I'm always worried about putting someone out, you know. Don't be. Yeah, and and that's what. And I was going to say something similar. It's just in in my indication, in my experiences with the veterans that I've played with, they've always been very accommodating and, and, and trying to help you out. And, mm. and that's, that's, that's really cool. Right. The thing to keep in mind is even if they're dicks, you're a new audience for them. And so yeah. they get to, they get to ha- rehash all of their, their obnoxious old stories old that they've told yep. everybody every, all the time. And yeah, so they, they love having newbies in the group. Hmm. I'll have to check that out more then. He said he's always sending me invites for it, and it's like, well. Yeah. I mean, in a worst oh. case scenario, try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it anymore. I mean, yeah. You don't yeah. Just say, eh, this is, I don't think this is for me. I'm going to back out. And yeah. they'll hem and haw or whatever, but yeah, you're in control. That's cool. So. And I also, I can't, I wish I could remember. I want to say I had not that long ago um, heard about an actual play podcast that plays Marvel superheroes. And I will, okay. to, I will have to see if I can track it down. Mm. Yeah, I definitely would love to hear that. Cuz it's been so long since we uh, we played that system. Mm-hmm. Uh, um and I know there's websites out there that add characters from other companies and other properties and that kind of stuff. It would be kind of cool kind of Take a look at those and see what the their stats and all that. And see how they translate. Which hmm. some of that you're going to have to do grain of salt with, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it'll be kind of cool. So. 
Yep. See, now, years ago, I had another friend who was trying to get me into a game called um, City of Heroes. Mm-hmm. Is that like the Marvel game? or it, I don't it, think it, I've it, heard of the Marvel one. Oh, yeah. Mar- uh, Marvel was early early to mid-80s. This was hmm. TSR, yeah. who, 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 who did Dungeons Dragons back in the day. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, city, the, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. They got the, they got the license back yeah. in the day, and that's that's where it came from. Hmm. Um, city of Heroes was a kind of a separate uh, a, a superhero role playing game because, uh, of course, you know everybody started kind of doing it because DC got their own setup with uh, I think it was like Mayfair. Um, but you had that, and then you had uh, Champions. Which 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 was funny because back in the day, back in the early seventies, Marvel owned the right the rights to the title Champions, and they even had a, a book there for a while. But they let that go, and then here comes and here comes this role playing system, and they take the name Champions. Hmm. They get the trademark, and then when Marvel decided to want to bring back that group and start a new series, they couldn't use Champions because <laughs> 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 they didn't have the trademark anymore. <laughs> Whoops. Or, or turnaround's fair play, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know that much about it, but I have heard of City of Heroes. Hmm. Uh, so... Yeah, I got as far as building a character in that one. <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, I mean, that's cool. That's a start. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's where, you know, there, you can have a lot of fun with doing that. I know Mike and mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. Not just in Marvel, but, I mean, with uh, D&D and, and GURPS. Uh, God, I would love to do GURPS again. But I don't need to. Yeah, you don't hear many people say that either. <laughs> now, well, but the, but the thing is, what's good is obviously the system. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a very crunchy system. Yeah. Which, hmm. me, which means, I mean, it's also very generic, so you can do a lot of different things. I mean, I've dabbled in super in doing superheroes in GURPS. It's we a, did Star Wars in GURPS. We did do Star Wars in GURPS. Yeah. Huh. It's, it's very flexible. Yeah. yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah, and I don't think Steve Jackson does. Uh, they don't do anything in GURPS anymore, do they? Uh, I, it's still yeah, it's still around. I mean, obviously Munchkin took stuff. off, and and they've been riding that wave. But yeah, they right. do still put out some GURPS stuff from time to time. Yeah. And for those who are questioning, GURPS stands for General Universal Role Playing System. So GURPS. Yep. And it's it means exactly what like a we were saying you could literally do a sci-fi campaign with that system with with additional rules that are specifically for sci-fi and you can do horror or you can do westerns or you can do superheroes so it's 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 but i mean there is a just a generic set of, of rules that mm. basically apply to any of them right that you can adapt into whatever genre you want yeah or whatever mashup of genres you want yeah yeah we did a lot of fantasy we did for a long yep. time. Yep. Yep. That's yes. cool. Yeah, I still remember the Eddie chant. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> that, was, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, okay, before we get into uh, this week's discussion, do you want to uh, mention our monthly uh, meet and gab? It's coming up. It's actually going to be Saturday, March 14th at 7 p.m. And if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, every second Saturday of the month, uh, we do a meetup. Uh, So if you like to come out and hang with us, have some good food and some great conversation about anything in the geek universe, we, we invite you to come by. Uh, And the place we hang out is uh, Wing City. That's located at 1456 Beltline Road uh, in Garland. Uh, Zip is 75044. 
And we have information on our website, www.thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. Just click on the Events tab, and there's, inf- there's all the information there. We also have a Facebook event set up, so if you're following us on Facebook, you can see all that information there as well. And if you're not following us on Facebook, but come on ahead and follow us and, and you can go check that out. Also, we are accepting donations to uh, Comic Books for Kids, the charity that we've been dealing with, uh, getting new and like new all ages and teen rated comics to kids who are in hospitals and cancer centers. Uh, just kind of give them a little uh, diversion and some enjoyment. Uh, so go ahead and bring those over if you have some. Uh, you can check out their website, www.cb4k.org. And we have information on our website as well. There's a CB4K tab that uh, gives you additional information for them as well. So we would greatly appreciate any contributions you can uh, give. If you like to give something financial, that uh, the funds that those funds would be going to help ship the books across the United States and Canada, uh, we advise you to go to their website, and there's a PayPal account there that you can donate. So thank you very much for your help. And we look forward to seeing you on the 14th. Okay. Uh, we are continuing our comedy theme. I would say it's comedy month, but I think it's going to go a little bit longer than that for, for a couple reasons, since we, especially since we missed a week, but that's okay. But we are, to, with today's episode, we are discussing a film that's celebrating its is it the 40th anniversary? Yeah, 40th yeah. anniversary. One of, one of my favorite comedies, Airplane. And it's interesting, the origins of this story, uh, of, the, of this film, because it originally was supposed to be basically more or less a parody of a film called Zero Hour, which... I didn't know until I came across that film several years ago. And I was watching this, so I was like, what the hell? What the hell? Because <laughs> the plot is about a ex-fighter pilot who, whose name is Ted Stryker, who's forced to land a commercial airplane because the pilots were incapacitated. That's literally the storyline of Zero Hour, which is literally the storyline for Airplane. <laughs> Including the exclamation mark. Mm-hmm. And, and reading up about the film Airplane, they actually obtained the rights of Zero Hour, what it sounds like. Because hmm. they were concerned, they were concerned about, they were concerned about legal issues, I think. Probably, because what, what the story the story was is they were recording stuff on TV to use as material to do com- comedy routines for the Kentucky Fried Theater. And if that name sounds familiar, yes, this is the same group that did Kentucky Fried Movie, Liz's favorite movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And the story is is that um, uh, I forgot who was it was it uh, re- was just recording just uh, doing recording of uh, just ads late night ads and all that kind of stuff and accidentally recorded zero hour and so when they watched it they're like oh this seems right for making fun of so that's essentially how this came about and. Uh, they were going to get uh, John Landis involved, but they eventually filmed it. They directed it. After going through the process with the Kentucky Fried Movie, they figured out how to actually do a better script. They took the ads out because there was actually going to be ads in the movie and just to actually do the story, and a comedy classic was born. So with that being stated... Uh, I'm going to open up the floor to everybody else's thoughts and feelings of this film. 
I have to admit, I am dying to hear what Liz thinks of this movie. <laughs> yeah. I actually like this movie. Um, I, I think this was probably the first movie I saw kind of shot in his style. Because it's... The first 40 minutes of it, it's like one story, but they're telling you, you know, the backstory and that kind of thing. And his drinking problem. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) But it's definitely the kind of movie that you have to watch. It's not something you can have playing while you're doing something else because there's so much going on outside of the story. Oh, God, yeah. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that you actually have to watch what's going on, you know. But yeah, I, 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 I liked this one. When I was researching for this, um, I had noticed one of the critics was like, be careful. Um, this is PG because this is before they had PG-13 because there's a full frontal noodle scene. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's not full oh, yeah. frontal. It's just, it's just top half. Yeah. yeah. It's like, wait, what? Did yeah. I miss something? It's a yeah. very, very brief. <laughs> yeah, gosh, like, like scene, it's, yes. you know. So, I, when I rewatched it, it was like, <laughs> oh, okay, you know. That wing controversy all over again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> Let's go back and look, you know. But no, I, I liked this one. This is one of those that's what I call the stupid funny. Yeah, but, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of the stuff in this is just is basically wordplay. Yeah, it's big ba- time. Bad puns. Yeah. So if you can don't handle bad puns, like... right. <laughs> surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Obviously. I think Johnny in the control room made the whole movie, though. I I, I would love to see more of just him. <laughs> He was hilarious. Uh, I, I don't. My my concern would be I don't know if more of him would work. Yeah. I think it would because I mean his whole shtick is he's annoying as hell. Yeah. yeah. Well, he just pops in and says something something just kind of annoying. It's completely non sequitur. And <laughs> yeah, to do that to do that for a whole show you'd get something like the young ones like I was talking about earlier and it yeah. it works in a in a certain way and oh uh, man yeah. An entire series of that would be hard. That would be. He was definitely, definitely funny. And I think he's in the second one, too, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. It's, he was also in Kentucky Pride movie, too. Is he? <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I must have missed that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's in the courtroom scene. Yeah, he was a stenographer. Oh. He's a stenographer in the courtroom scene. Now, not that you're ever going to go back and watch it to see. But... <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> And we had such high hopes. <laughs> Maybe Brandon will. <laughs> yeah, if we had led you off with airplane, it might have you might have actually liked that movie more, honestly. But yeah, but we didn't. No, our mistake. Yeah, this is. Um, and it ain't just our opinion. This is widely hailed as one of the greatest comedies of all time. So, I mean, no, yeah. no big shock. Yeah, we all love this movie. I mean. Not to not to speak for less or anything, but um, yeah, this is this is a fantastic movie. Uh, it, it never never fails to crack me up, um, and and it's also one of those like like basically like Liz was saying, you can watch it several times and see stuff in it the the fourteenth time that you didn't see the first time. Yeah. Or hear something, <laughs> or make a connection between two things that you saw but never realized were working out. Yeah, it's it's that kind of movie. And the, and the two Girl Scouts fighting at the beginning of the movie in the bar, mm-hmm. it's it's very 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 apparent in one of the shots that it's two guys in wigs sitting there fighting each other. Oh yeah, it's not yeah. Bad, sure. Right now, was that supposed to be seen, or was that just something that? Oh, I'm betting was that, that was part a, of the shtick of being funny? I'm betting that's part of the shtick. <laughs> that is my guess. Yeah, I said that was like, wow, that's a guy in a wig. <laughs> but this is one of those movies that I, I think in the times we live in today would have never been made. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Not even close. Not even close, yeah. <laughs> 
But this was when comedy, you could poke at everything. And everything was funny because it wasn't meant to be offensive, you know. It was just supposed to be funny. <laughs> let's let's be careful how far down this road we go. But yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, 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 I thought it was a funny movie. Definitely a lot of laughs. Mm-hmm. And, and most certainly my favorite Ethel Merman cameo in any movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's your thoughts. I remember seeing it when it first came out, and I, I was pretty in, I found it enjoyable, had a good feel about it. But unlike Mike, this is one that I've seen, and I don't have to do a stop down to watch it again. It comes on cable often, but I'm not one that says, I've got to watch this. Let's see how they handle it. It it's not that I don't enjoy it, it's, but to me it's just kind of tired. I'm done with it. And because of that, I kind of don't want to be bothered. So I'm the, the center of the group. Uh, you mean you didn't watch it over and over again in preparation for this show? Come on. I tried. <laughs> I got about 20 minutes into it, and I said, that's enough, thanks. Okay, yeah, I remember how it goes now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember. Ah, that's cool. People should have different opinions of things. Yep. Now, the week that the show does come out, it will be on Flix. Like four or five times, I guess, for the anniversary. Dang. There, yep. there you go, Les. Now you, can, you have plenty of a chance to watch it four or five times. There you go. Right. So, I've, so I've got four or five naps I can take. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but it is also on Showtime. Mm-hmm. There you Woo-hoo. go. Cool. I have it on DVD, so I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, I think I had this, like, on VHS. <laughs> wow. Well, I imagine I did, too. <laughs> yeah, right. I think I did, too, yeah. Yep. You talk about the puns, and you talk about the visual jokes and all that, but one of the things that really got me, I mean, it was funny the first couple times I watched it, but when I, start, when I got older and start realizing the likes of Robert Stack, Lloyd Bridges, Leslie Nielsen, these actors that are known for be doing serious dramatic roles, saying the dumbest things with a straight with face. A, with a straight mm-hmm. face, and you're just going, "Oh my God, I I, I don't believe this." Oh, the, the, the casting in this movie was genius. It's, yes, and it's so funny because if you look at the, I looked at the Wikipedia. This and and Robert Stack actually turned down the offer, but they talked to him, and and what they did was they actually showed a video of John Biner, if anybody remembers John Biner, the the comedic actor impressionist, doing an impression of Robert Stack. So he changed his mind. So Robert Stack was doing an impression of John Biner doing an impression of. of Robert Stack and did the role. <laughs> <laughs> right. How that's can, effective. How can you not appreciate that? I mean, that's awesome. Um, I don't know. And, I don't, an actor going, I don't know how to make fun of myself. And these guys just going, you don't have to, this guy's already done it for you. Yeah. Just do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Sure. And we have to point out the, the fact that this rejuvenated Leslie Nielsen's career. Oh, man. Big time. This was, this was Big, the role right here. This was it. This was it. Because up until then, he'd been, he had been the lead or even the second banana, but he was always the 
serious role. I remember him being in The Reluctant Astronaut, which was a Don Knotts film. Mm. He was in it, but you know he may have had a couple of funny lines, but he was always the straight guy. So here's his chance, and apparently he's always wanted to do comedy. He always wanted to be the ones that said the funny lines and all this. From from what I have read, he you know he had the whoopee cushion, and and if you've seen the interviews with him, he always had it. I mean, from up up until the the day he left Earth, you know, the, the, the you know when when he passed, he he had that whoopee cushion with him because he loved making people laugh. So this was his golden opportunity, and it just it. It took him in a different uh, a different direction, and he rode he rode that wave, mm-hmm. and enjoyed every minute of it. Oh yeah, yeah. sir. Yep. I mean, honestly, probably my favorite one was Peter Graves. Um, in this one, I mean, again, another actor who had been around a while had been done serious roles. I mean, he had he had driven the Mission Impossible TV series, which is. One of the most, I mean, it's 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 a spy show. It's one of the most yeah. serious shows on TV. There's nothing funny about it. They don't ever crack jokes on that show, and <laughs> they bring him in, and he just starts spouting the most random ass things, the the m- most unbelievably inappropriate things you could talk say to a child. And he's got this, his arm around this kid. He's sitting in the pilot seat, and he's got his arm around this kid, asking him. So, so, Timmy, have you ever spent any time in a Turkish prison? <laughs> and, and he and he almost didn't do the film because he had a problem with the pedophile jokes. Uh huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I mean, and the deal is, they, I mean, there, there were, were there pedophile jokes really? I mean, I don't know, maybe. Uh, it there, could be there's a There's some plot. borderline stuff there. Granted. But, yeah. I mean, have, I have you seen anything... a grown man naked? So I okay, mean, that yeah, that's probably that, some that's, of it. Some of it's kind of implied. That's you know, very heavily mean, implied, but yeah. All right, fair enough. But yeah, I mean, just his delivery on those lines. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, even even if he wasn't a hundred percent into it, he's such a such a professional that he nailed it. Yeah. Oh, the 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 the, the scene where. Leslie Nielsen, who is playing the doctor, is explaining Julie Haggerty, the flight attendant, the symptoms that 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 the person would go through from the from the food poisoning, <laughs> and you're literally watching Peter Graves have those symptoms as, as, as he's soon as he's them. as yeah. he's saying, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm cracking up just thinking it's, about it. It's a, it's one hell of a physical comedy scene from and and honestly it's from a guy literally sitting in a chair yeah yeah listening to people behind him talk yep i liked well today wasn't the day to quit smoking well today wasn't the day to quit amphetamine <laughs> like damn each time it just got worse it worse like i picked the wrong day to quit sniffing glue yeah <laughs> and then he's on the ceiling <laughs> Lloyd Bridges. I mean, Lloyd, Lloyd Bridges. Bridges, right? <laughs> and in court, in court of this, it was it was his uh, voice that talked him into doing this. Yep. It's Which I'm like, thank you, thank you guys, mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and of course, June Cleaver made an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> In totally the role you would not expect to see her in. Excuse me, stewardess. I speak jive. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. And the thing I found interesting is, according to, according to this, uh, they originally wrote this for this to be a, a, a starring vehicle for David Letterman. Hmm. Huh. That he'd actually auditioned for the role of the news anchor in the Kentucky Fried Movie, but he screen tested and they went, nah, no. So they went with Robert Hayes, which I think was a good choice. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, Robert Hayes was an actor. <laughs> yeah, not no knock on David Letterman, dude. 
dude had talents for sure. And I mean, still does. Don't get me wrong. He's not dead yet, but he wasn't really an actor. No, he was a stand-up comedian. But I mean, yeah, this the the, the role was going to require a lot of straight face. Yeah. And as as you don't have to watch every single season of his talk show to to realize David Letterman doesn't always have a straight face. Right. And another interesting bit bit of trivia that the the terminal announcement voices. Oh yeah, I saw that. That was awesome. Where did well. It, were actually the, the the people who do it for the Los Angeles International Airport, and they're actually they were a real life married couple. Mm-hmm. Huh. Don't start your white shit here. Yeah, don't, don't start giving me your white shit. White your shit. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a, oh, it they said that they had. Um, Basically, auditioned voice actors and just couldn't, wouldn't, just hadn't, weren't finding what they wanted. So they tracked down the people who actually did the real life recordings huh. at the airport. And, and, and speaking of uh, speaking of that, the, if you go back, because I noticed this recently, uh, the sequence where. Peter Graves' character, which is uh, Captain Over, I believe, mm-hmm. is being uh, paged to pick up the white courtesy phone. <laughs> yeah. And he picks up, like, the red one and says, no, it's the white one. No, oh, the white phone. If you, no, the white phone. If you listen very carefully, carefully you hear someone laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, and it hangs it up. And, you know, and it's like, I was like, okay. I never noticed that before. You talk about that. You talk about picking up stuff later on, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah, you talk about the drinking problem. That's ah. classic. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that is classic. I also always got a kick out of the uh, the Peace Corps flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just, oh man! Again with the bits of of this movie that could not get made today right that was i mean and honestly that's i mean to an extent that's what makes it funny if you if you've if you've ever served in the peace corps or have talked to anybody have heard any stories about serving in the peace corps it's oh it's 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 so it's so rife for for mockery it's just it's, it's easy to parody that stuff it's just just it's yeah yeah. With Elaine sitting there talking about Tupperware uh, products. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, because the deal is that the, in, when you're in the Peace Corps, you're trying to kind of assimilate into the culture. You're trying to, I mean, you're you're there to work on things to help them improve stuff, but you're not. It's, that's what makes selling the them tup- Tupperware. Right. That's what makes the Tupperware <laughs> funny is that you know that's not how people. That's not how that works, folks. That's right. the deal. Another thing I learned in looking at looking up stuff in this, I, and I probably knew this, um, at some point, um, but it had been a while since I had heard it. Um, apparently, the Zucker Abrahams and Zucker didn't have anything to do with the sequel. That yeah, that I did not know, but that that uh, unfortunately that explains a lot. It, it does. I mean, it, because I mean, okay, later on they do sequels to other things, but yeah, I mean, A- Airplane Two is funny, but it ain't this movie. Yeah, it is definitely inferior to the to the, to the original. Um, yeah, I mean, they got a lot of the same folks back to do it, but. The Zuckers and Abrams were not involved, and yeah, it it kind of shows. Um, but I mean, it's still worth checking out. Well, I I think with a movie like this, when you when the puns go off right, and it it, it it's kind of like you you you've captured it and you've done the best. So when the second comes out, where do you go from there? 
Well, you know, you you've done the the, the punny jokes, and you know. Right, it's you, you're forcing yourself to improve on the puns, and right, damn, that's hard to do. <laughs> and a lot of times becomes predictable. Uh huh. That's what's kind of cool about this one, and you know, like Johnny and the, you didn't expect that, you know, and then to try to copy that and redo it, it's just like, eh. In there, <laughs> right. you know. Right, you can't. It's not going to be Mm-mm. as awesome as the first one because, I mean, to, to be as awesome as the first one, it has to be better. Yep. And it, it either has to be better or it has to be very different. Yeah. And yeah, that wasn't going to happen with a sequel to Airplane. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's not bad. Well, and I think, too, when you look at the actors, you know, we were saying this was the first for Leslie Nelson and, you know, to be funny. And this was a lot of the times for these actors, too, the first time to be on film. You know, they've done TV. So uh, do you remember your first day at work? You're your go-getter and you want to do this and it wants to be good. And, you know, by by year two, you're like, eh, you're punching a clock. <laughs> I, I think that's a lot of what was captured there too. It was, it was the beginning for them. It was the start of something good. And second time around, they've done that. They've proved themselves. You know, it's it's not as it's not as fresh, right? And it's not going to be. You can't. You kind of can't do that. No, because you can't capture that magic again. Right. You've got to do it. You've got to do it differently somehow. And honestly, that's kind of what they did. With Police Squad, because that was kind of their next project. And they did take Leslie Nielsen with them. Yep. Um, but, yeah, that was they, – they instead of doing the disaster movie, they did a cop show. Yeah, they they, they, they did a parody of, of current-day cop shows. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if you get a chance, it's genius, too. Mm-hmm. See, when I – when I finally knew who Nielsen was, I only knew him as funny. I, I would have to go back and watch his serious stuff because I don't. I guess I didn't watch. Well, I, mean, it, that all I only knew him in, as funny. That all started in 1980. I mean. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's that's when you're starting to watch things. You're right. Really, so. But see, you know, this coming out in the 80s, I'm sure it was like 85. 86, 80, you know, later in the 80s when I actually oh, sure. was allowed to watch it. <laughs> oh, you didn't watch this when you were seven? Come on. Right. Yeah, I was like four or five. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I remember my parents watching stuff like this, you know. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't take long to watch the, the Police Squad film uh, episodes since there was only six. Right. 30 minutes each. Six, six half hour episodes. Yeah. Got them on DVD too. <laughs> yeah. I definitely have those on DVD. They are good. Well, we'll talk more about them down the road. How's that for a tease? I'm sure we will. <laughs> and you talk about some of the praise the film's gotten. I, where did I see that it was? Oh, shoot. Uh, it's in the National it, Film Registry. It's the National Film... Uh, Police Squad is? No, no airplane. Uh, airplane. Oh. We're back on the topic now, Liz. Yeah, we're right. back on topic. <laughs> yeah. <Thank you>. Wow. <laughs> uh, in November, November 2015, the film was ranked as the fourth funniest screenplay by the Writers Guild of America. And its list of 101 funniest screenplays. Fourth. Fourth. Wow. What were the top three? Or do you have it? I don't have it. Okay. Just curious. It would be interesting to see that list for sure. Mm-hmm. There you go. There's a show idea. Let's find that list and we'll just talk about that list. We could definitely tell you to do that. Okay, so any other things you want to kind of uh, mention about Airplane? Any final thoughts? Auto. 
Otto. Otto. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, could they he have put could they have put his p- blow up valve in any more inconvenient spot? Yeah. <laughs> And to me, I thought it was weird that smoking on an airplane was even an option. <laughs> that's oh, how old this movie that's is. That's how old this movie is. Yeah, that's the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep, it was an option. The, 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 the ticket thing. when it, Smoking or not smoking? Smoking. And he hands him the ticket, and it's smoking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Again with the puns. <laughs> Well, assume crash positions where everybody's out of their seat and disarray. <laughs> on top of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one of those you have to at least watch once, you know. You say unless, they, unless you're less than once is yeah. enough. No, I'm, I'm saying have a, have a good time. Sit down and watch it because it is worth it. Yeah, he he didn't trash the movie. Yeah. No, I know he didn't. I think he's trashing us a little for, for giggling over it as much, but that's all right. It's okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. We still love you. <laughs> Even if you hate fun. Mm. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> fun and is on... a three-letter word. It is. Mm. And, you know, I I was actually surprised with the movies that you do like that you didn't really care f- too much for this one. <laughs> like, wow. my blown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to leave that way. one alone, too. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean that in a bad way. It's just usually you like the the funny, jokey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying because there are several movies that I really like, but mm-hmm. I know that a lot of people would thumb their nose at them, and I understand that. Yeah. Different style. Yes, because everyone knows I love bad movies. So. <laughs> Right, you just have There's a sort of start. different set of criteria yeah. for for your movies, for your enjoyment, yeah. and that's fine. And, I mean, it's not like you don't have any good movies in your list of movies you like. You do. And I appreciate that. Our, our, our tastes in movies vary, but not widely. Yeah. So you have a pretty broad range in movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Who like you a- call it a broad? <laughs> 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 And on that note, <laughs> yeah, I think we better get while the getting's good. Oh yeah, this can't get any better than this. Um, we're gonna take a quick break and come back with our picks. And we're back, and it's time for our weekly picks. And leading off this week is Liz. All right. Um, for my first pick, I'm going with one from DC Comics called Strange Adventures. Um, if if you follow <laughs> either Tom King or Mitch Gerards on Twitter, they've been pumping this really hard. They've um, given little snippets and details and stuff. So I'm pretty I'm pretty curious to see where this goes, um, especially. You know, with what they did with Mr. Miracle and everything. So, I don't know. We, sh- we shall see. Um, this one, of course, will follow Adam Strange, the hero of Ron. And um, I'm, I'm forgetting. I think this one, he's protecting his family from some of his past work that's coming back to haunt him, per se. So, like I said, if, if it's half as good as their pumping it up on Twitter to be definitely have to pick this one up and and see what it's all about. I uh, see Adam Strange again. It's been a little mm-hmm. while, hasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that that it's uh, going to be a good run. 
and hopefully shop owners will buy comp- uh, several copies and not be stuck in the in the throes like they did this past week. Yeah, I, I think this will definitely be one. Like I said, I know a lot of people don't follow him on Twitter, but I, I think it'll definitely be one that you'll, you'll, you'll really want to want that. All righty. Uh, Mike, you're next. Okie dokie. So my first pick is an image book, um, and I am picking Mercy, number one. Um, this is a new series, obviously, since it's a number one. Um, And it is the story of a small mining town, um, which uh, gets uh, riled up over a series of murders. Um, And it's kind of kind of a Victorian Gothic type setting um, with some some interesting, mysterious things going on in this town and dealing with one of the main characters um, and um, I, the, it's it's funny because it lists a uh, the the the, uh, the write up for it lists a a handful of uh, perfect for fans of type things. Two of them struck me as being an interesting parallel: um, the parasol protector and dark shadows. Um, okay. Yeah, it's honestly comparing it to parasol protector. It's got me curious. Because that's an interesting series. Um, if you're fam- if you're not familiar with it, um, it's by a writer named Dale Carriger. Um, there's some really fun stuff there, and she's done a lot of interesting uh, kind of Victorian fantasy type stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is this ought to be a lot of fun. Cool. Yes, yeah, sir. Alrighty, uh, I am next, and for my first pick. I'm going with a new series from Marvel Comics titled Strange Academy. It's being written by Scotty Young with art by Humberto Ramos. And this is uh, this is a series of where Doctor Strange is basically putting together an academy uh, for the young sorcerers in the Marvel Universe and try to teach them to use their abilities and, and of course, study the mystic arts and all that. So, honestly, I'm surprised it's taken this long to, for someone to kind of do this. Uh, it, it's going to be cool. I mean, Scotty's a great writer, and Humberto... I'm, I'm not going to... I was going to go... He, his work's magical, but I'm not. I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> but I won't do that. I love his art, so this this should be a winner for Marvel. I didn't realize that Scotty is writing this one. Now I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, I would I would consider picking this up just for the creators. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I'm trying to remember if if Scotty and uh, Humberto uh, teamed up together before. I I don't think they maybe they have. I, don't remember. I think they have. So maybe were they on Bully Wars together? Was that was that Ramos? I'm not sure that was Ramos. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't remember who I don't remember who yeah. drew that off the top of my head, but I don't know. Maybe. Alrighty, Wes. My first choice comes from uh, Aftershock Comics. It is Join the Future, number one. In this book, Zach Kaplan, the writer, and Peter Kowalski, the artist, bring you a ultra-modern megacity that rewards their uh, their citizens with a completely funded life. What else could be wrong, right? Well, <laughs> a nearby megacity pressures the people of a small town to join up or else, trying to annex them. And a young girl named Clem learn how far she has to go to defend her principles. So this is a sci-fi western that looks at a 
not a post-apocalyptic, but near-apocalyptic future. Hmm. Yeah, this was on my radar. That's yeah. interesting, yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Very much so. All righty. Liz, you're up again. All right. Um, for my second pick, it's one from Boom Studios called King of Nowhere. Um, this one will follow what they describe as a lovable, drunken lowlife named Dennis. <laughs> he wakes up on the outskirts of a town called Nowhere, which sounds like a town of, like, rejects. <laughs> kind of mutated, kind of, you know, not normal. But he has, like, no memory of how he got there. So um, he's got to try to figure out who he is. Um, they say there's a case of mistaken identity, and this will cover everything from the miraculous to the mundane. So I'm taking it from the title. They think that he's the king. <laughs> and, of course, if anybody else is a SpongeBob fan, <laughs> kind of reminded me of when he loses his memory and becomes like the mayor of this town and kind of screws everything up, and then he remembers who he was. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe this one will be like that. He's a two Eisner Award winners. Um, the guy from Ice Cream Man is writing this one, Maxwell Prince. So should be a pretty good little story. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, this one was on my radar, too. And I really almost just I had to stop myself from making a Life of Brian joke because you wouldn't <laughs> have gotten it. No, he's not right. the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this sounds really cool. Yeah. All righty, Mikey. Oh, I'm next. Gosh, okay. Um, okay, so my second pick is from Ahoy Comics, um, and I am picking Billionaire Island number one. Um, this is to talk about, I mean, we, we've got a, a smorgasbord of awesome creators this week. Um, this is Mark Russell's new book. Um, oh. and he is teaming up with Steve Pugh um, to create a story about a... A, an island which is which is a haven for billionaires, um, and if, if it be, you can get anything you want as long as you've got the money, as long as you can afford it. Um, and the, the the fun part, of course, is that when you've got a setup like this, there's always some sort of price to pay. Um, so I mean, it will be interesting to see how how they take. What, what direction they take something like this in. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. It does sound good. I agree. Yeah. Uh, this should be, this was, this was on my radar as well. So I'm, I'm excited about this one. So, uh, I believe I am next. So for my second choice, uh, I'm going with another title from Marvel Comics. This is a five-issue limited series called Spider-Man Noir written by Margaret Stoll and art by Juan Ferreira. When when I first saw anything about Spider-Man Noir, this was from several years ago, I picked up some, I picked up some of those books just on, out of curiosity. Because I thought, how in the heck would this character kind of work in the pulp era of comics, and it, surprisingly well. And of course, this series it's taking place in 1939, so it's just before. Uh, you know, we're 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 just uh, dealing with, of course, all the issues in Europe and all that. So I'm I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to be because, like I said, I didn't think that the character would really work well in a noir environment but he does uh, so I highly recommend checking this book out mm -hmm. that's very interesting I wouldn't have thought yep. so either I wouldn't have thought yeah. it would work either yeah but cool. I, I, I really dug the stories that they had put out before with Spider-Man Noir this has got my interest peaked now too yeah and I, 
it was funny because several years ago they did they did a bunch of this like Spider Man, X Men, and there was like a couple others and the other ones I didn't care for. Spider Man was just I was like, oh wow, this was this was great. So any any chance that they come out with a with a new book, I'm I'm going to pick it up. Mm-hmm. Especially if Margaret Stoll, I like I like her writing, so this this should be really good. Alrighty, uh, Wes. My second choice also comes from Marvel, written by Alex Ross. This is a new title that tells uh, stories from his series. That was done 30, count it, 30 years ago. Marvels. Marvels hit and was a huge success. Uh, it was the telling of superheroes first appearing and how it progressed from uh, the human torch forward. In this new book, Marvel number one, You have Ross writing the stories, or the basic, I'm I'm sorry, the the base of it, and uh, it's an anthology. So in the first book, you have uh, Ross and Steve Darnall doing a story, and uh, you also have Frank Espinoza, Steve Rude, Kurt Busick, and this is going to be fun. I'm reading Marvel X right now, but this is going to be kind of an extension of the original Marvel series. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Marvel's was a a huge... uh, selling point when it first came out. So I'm excited about this one, too. Mm-hmm. Cool. That sounds cool. That's awesome. It does. Nice. So, uh, and our honorable mention this week is... The honorable mention comes from IDW. It is Corto Maltese, The Ballad of the Salty Sea. I did not realize that there were this many graphic novels based on this character. Uh, Hugo Pratt is the writer and artist for this. And in this, the uh, character Corto Maltese is uh, one of a ensemble a cast of characters that exist through the 12 book series in this one you re, you uh, meet Pandora a young and beautiful maiden her brother Cain and a mysterious criminal mastermind monk you also meet Rasputin Lieutenant Slutter of the German Navy and the Natives Skull and Tarot. If you get a chance to read these, these are a fun read. They're pretty laden with history, which makes it that much more fun. So uh, I'm I'm signing up for this one because it it is a trade, but uh, this is a series that started in 1967. So if you come forward, you know, almost 50 years. You've got well, almost 30 or 45 years right now. So I'm sold on this. I'm, I want a copy of this one for sure. Yeah, it's cool that they're, I guess, re- reprinting these. That's kind of it awesome. Is. I'm, I'm, yep. I, need to, I need to get hold of some of these. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Any special shout outs or mentions this week? Don't think so. Think we're good. No. No, sir. Okay. 
go ahead to our regular shout outs. Uh, I want to thank Pop Goes the Culture Podcast Network for allowing us to be part of a great group of shows. Uh, definitely check them out. Uh, check out our, our fellow podcasters. Uh, we'll have a link in our show notes uh, where you can find them. Also, I want to thank the fine people who make up Potter and Family on Twitter for spreading the the love of the fellowship. Uh, definitely recommend that you check out some of their fine work. Easiest way to do that is do a, a search hashtag Potter and Family. Just scroll through and whatever catches your attention, click on that link, download that episode, and have fun. Thank you guys for your support as always. I also want to thank Manny the Martyr for supplying the music to our podcast. Please check out their music. We'll have a link in the show notes as well. And finally, you, dear listener, thank you for downloading and listening to today's episode. We appreciate your support. Uh, all 200 episodes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Any kind of feedback, comment, questions, uh, suggestions, uh, complaints, observations, whatever, please send them our way. We'd love to hear from you. There are several ways you can contact us. Our email address is email at the fellowship of the geeks.net. Or you can go to the website and click on the About Us page. And there's a contact form that you can fill out there. Uh, I've already mentioned our Facebook page. Please follow us there. And if you're interested in coming to the uh, our meeting gab, our monthly meeting gab, there's well, the, the Facebook event is set up. So by all means, RSVP if you can, or just interested if you're interested. Uh, obviously, we're on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Feel free to follow us there. If you'd like to follow our personal. Uh, Twitter accounts. Uh, Mike can be found at Mikey Geek. Liz can be found at LN underscore Geek. And I can be found at Tom EC Geek. And wherever you uh, download our podcast, we would greatly appreciate it if you would rate and review us. Uh, any final thoughts before we say goodbye? Just thanks, everybody. For the 200th yep. time. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it, folks. And I guess I'll say it for the 199th time. Thank <laughs> you for listening. <laughs> we we appreciate the support as always. And until next time, geek on, my friends. <laughs> We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. You can follow us on Facebook at The Fellowship of the Geeks. And on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Until next time... <laughs>